So I'm gonna share with you three things uh, that I think is really dumb to do on stage. I have been speaking for over 10 years on professional stages around the world, and there's a few things that I noticed some professionals do that really separate amateurs and professionals. Now, I don't know about you, but as I go through these, probably you'll resonate with them and go, yeah, I've seen someone do that, and it just annoys the heck out of me. And so these are some things of what not to do. Like these are like the dumb things, right? So so do not do these. And if you if you can appreciate or you've seen someone else do any of these, give the video a like and let me know. The first one is that the speaker talks all the time. Now what I mean by that is amateur speakers think that the goal of a presentation is to fill the entire time that you have in front of the audience, let's say it's 30 minutes, with your words, like a constant stream of words. Let me tell you, that is not the goal of your presentation. Even if you're doing a webinar, you're doing a live stage presentation, the goal is not to fill the time with your words. The goal is to have a conversation. And this is one of the big frames that I use when we teach our students in Sell From Stage Academy is this idea of seeing the, the presentation as a conversation. So even if it's even though it's one-on-one, -on -one, it needs to feel like a conversation. And if you're just talking all the time and you're not asking questions, you're not pausing, you aren't reflecting, you aren't engaging the audience, you aren't getting the audience to do something. If you're just talking all the time and using your words and thinking that every single moment in the entire presentation you need to fill with your words, you get it, right? When I'm doing it right now, it, it is such a dumb thing to do. So do not do that. Stop trying to fill the whole presentation with your words. The second thing that people do that I think is really dumb is when they are doing a presentation to sell, because I teach a lot of people to not just speak, but also speak in a way that sells, is they ask the audience if they want more money. Stop asking the audience if you want more money. Like it's such a cheesy, dumb, let's call it, it's 80s, salesy, it's like icky, like who here wants to make more money? Like it is the dumbest thing ever. Of course they want to make more money. And because the reason why people ask it is because they, there's this thing in speaking called universal questions. Universal questions is you ask a question where almost everyone is going to say yes. Like who here has a mother? You know, like that type of question, everyone's going to say yes. But I think you can be smarter in the questions that you ask. Like asking people who here wants to make more money. It's like such a dumb, old, sleazy tactic and it associates you with kind of like, it's like you're peddling something. And so don't ask that question, right? Super dumb. Uh, especially if you're trying to sell something, don't ask who he wants to make more money. Like design some sort of like smart activity that helps the audience to understand that there's so much more potential of money that they can make and them actually helping to articulate it through the actual speech or the presentation. But like just asking who wants to make more money, dumb, right? Stop doing that. The second, the, no, the third, the third one is the, this is a dumb thing that people do is that they, they read, they don't speak. What I mean by that is they have slides, like you've probably seen it, we'll refer to it as like a death by PowerPoint. And if you've experienced a death by PowerPoint, just write the word death <laughs> down below. Uh, if you've experienced that, you know what I mean. Uh, where the speaker is standing there, and they usually are turned to the side and they're like clicking and they're reading the slides as they're going. And they're like, you know, 24% of people are finding that Google is a fantastic place to go from. Like, and it's like, we know that's what the words say on the slide. Like, stop reading to us. Do you know who you read to? You read to a four-year-old. That's who you read to. You don't read to adults. Like, I read to my daughter. My daughter is four. Adults are not four. Don't read 
to adults. You speak to adults. And this is a little hack, right? <laughs> thanks, thanks, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. You know it, right? Um, this is a little hack. Is is that your audience don't know what you were supposed to say. And so one of the shifts that you need to make when you speak is realizing that when you speak, your audience is not there with a checklist going, hang on, you were supposed to say this, this, and this. Like, they're not going through that. All they're doing is wanting to have a conversation with you, right? And so they're wanting to hear what you have to say. And so don't worry about getting it right of what you were supposed to say. Obviously, prep, prep, prepare, prep, prep, prepare, practice, have some slides, but don't put all the words on the slides. Like you should be speaking to the audience, having a conversation with the audience, not reading slides. You read to children, you speak, and you and you have a conversation with adults. I trust that makes sense, right? Now, I want to give you a bonus one, and this is a big one. If you ever want to become someone who gets paid to speak, and I've been getting paid to speak for over 10 years now. My first ever paid speaking presentation was for Hewlett Packard. Um, I was like 27 years old, I think I was. And uh, it was literally to 5,000 people. Like, it, it was the craziest opportunity ever. And... Um, the this is the biggest no no. This is the biggest no no. Now, but by the way, I didn't start there with the five thousand. I started with ten people, right? I started with ten people when I was younger, speaking at school. I started, I started at school, then I went to university, and then I started speaking at work when I was an employee, um, and then I started speaking at free engagements, and it led all the way to that one first opportunity, which was the HP for five and a half thousand people. But it doesn't start there, right? Like there's a journey. And so this is the biggest no-no. I want to give you this bonus one. Do not ever do this. If you want to get paid to speak and you want to be invited back, this is the biggest, biggest no-no. Is And by the way, this one, I literally was just speaking with someone who runs some of the biggest events in all of America and all of the world and she said that she had a speaker who did this recently and and we're talking about how it's such a big no-no, right? This is the thing. Never go over time, ever. What I mean by that, even if they take, let's say because sometimes the event like gets messed up and you they, they like ask your 30 minute presentation to go down to 20 minutes. Don't think that you can go over an extra minute or an extra two minutes because they took off 10 minutes off your presentation. Do not do that. You must go exactly on time. And so a mark of a true professional is when they say their last word, it is the last second on the clock. And it's like, thank you very much. Have a, gr have a great evening. And they walk off the stage. Like it is on the second, baby. And so that is something that I want to encourage you to do. Never, ever go over. Like every minute, like who here? Let me know if this makes sense. When you're watching a speaker and you know that they're going over uh, and they say things like, oh, I'll just be like a minute or so. I'll just like finish this quickly. And in your head, you're like, every minute feels like 60 minutes. Like it just feels longer and longer and longer. And you know that, especially if it's going over lunch and they've said, oh, lunch was at this time and they just keep going. It's the worst, right? Because every minute feels like five minutes, 10 minutes. And so a hack that I want you to have is in your, when, you're present, when you're mapping out your presentation, you're wanting to see your presentation in contextual chunks. So you might have like your introduction and that's like 10 minutes, your body, which, and let's say that's like 20 minutes and then your conclusion, that's like five minutes. So you want to contextually know how long each is going to take so that when you can track it along, you know where you're up to. And you can even get the event organizer or someone in the back to give you like a 20 minute, 10 minute, five minute, one minute kind of warning so that you can close out. But that is the biggest one, right? Do not go over time, especially if you wanna be a professional, respected in the industry, and if you wanna have a, get paid to speak as well. And so, hey, I hope this has been helpful. Let me know if this has been helpful. 
And uh, I'm happy to share some more dumb things that people do on stage and what not to do. Plenty of love to you guys. Hope you're well. And uh, we'll talk soon.